Be sure to check out www.successwithsleep.com, which will be referenced during this podcast. And don't forget to maximize your benefits by registering your email before its launch at this year's 15th annual towning meeting, April 19th to the 22nd at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. It is just a huge honor for me to be podcast interviewing Jonathan Greenberg of zipa.com or zipa.com, which is actually a cute name. It's happy Z's backwards. So it's Z and then happy backwards, Y-P-P-A-H.com. He's also, um, you can also find more about him at snoreexperts.com. But he, but Jonathan's career as a dentist has been truly fascinating. Um, he's the founder and owner of Snore Experts, which are five treatment centers in Los Angeles that exclusively treat snoring and sleep apnea. So you've, you've all heard people come on the show and talk about um, sleep apnea and everything, and they're experts, but they mostly lecture. This guy runs five centers, Beverly Hills, Pasadena, and Ch- is it in Chino or Encino? Encino. Encino or Encino? Yep. Is it Encino? Uh, <laughs> That's Valencia. true. It's in the valley. And Newport Beach. He's the founder and CEO of Zypa Inc., which is Happy Z spelled backwards. Zypa is a company that has two parts, a consumer division and a professional, both to dentists and physician. He and his wife also um, wrote a book on adventure travel in the 1990s called If You Can't Remember Your Last Vacation, You Need This Book, which sold out its first two printings and for which um, he was interviewed on the Oprah Winfrey show. So you were on the show with Oprah. Yeah. What was that like? It was pretty cool. It, I bet it was, she's a, she just you know, seems like she'd be a really cool down to earth lady. It, she was wonderful. You yeah. know, the cameras go on and she was just spectacular. It, it was a, definitely a lifetime highlight. Oh, yeah. The key components to Zypha are the mouthpieces he invented to treat snoring and sleep apnea. His undergraduate degree was biomedical engineering, actually, one of the first bioengineering classes to ever graduate Syracuse from Syracuse University. This was key to understanding how large a role the tongue plays in snoring and sleep apnea and the fact that no one had developed a solution that was comfortable. Everyone was just focused on bringing the job forward. So um, you graduated in um, from NYU, and uh, so you've been uh, in 1981. So, my God, how many years have you been practicing now? Uh, you know, it's since 81. We're talking, what, 30, um, 30, I guess about 36 years now. Yeah, 36. I, I, I took algebra and geometry and trig, and it took me that long to figure do the uh, subtraction on it. 36 years. So, you know, it's kind of uh, funny, Jonathan, because when I got out of school, I never heard of sleep apnea. I mean, I, 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 not only did we not have a class on it, I don't think I even heard of the word or the concept. And then it seems like, you know, I tell everybody, uh, sleep apnea reminds me of that old commercial, that Mr. Kool-Aid where he just ran through the wall. And about 10 years ago, out of nowhere in dentistry, this big old Mr. Kool-Aid runs through the wall named Sleep Apnea. And now, now you, you, it's all over the place. What, what made it just come onto the scene and explode like it did? And what year do you think it, Mr. Kool-Aid ran through the wall with Sleep Apnea? I think it really started to become the mainstay about 2000, 2001, to, between 2000, 2005. And I think part of that was actually the change in technology for CPAP machines. So, you know, if there's not a solution, people tend to ignore it. But when you start to get solutions for a problem, then it starts to get big. And that's when the Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid guy ran through the door. How many millennials under 30 have no idea about that commercial we're talking about? <laughs> Almost all of them. Yeah, they're all like, what? They, they probably don't even know what Kool-Aid is. They probably don't even know what Kool-Aid is, let alone the big fat. It was a big red picture of Kool-Aid running through the wall. He had arms and legs. Um, so what? So what is your, um, So let's start with your website, um, Happy Z spelled backwards, Z, Zipa. If my homies go to zypph.com, what are they going to find? Well, they're going to find uh, mostly talking about the consumer mouthpiece. But one of the things I'd like to just jump back for a second with is for all the dentists listening, you know, whenever we go to something, you know, in, in the 80s and uh, early 90s, you had cosmetic dentistry. You had the tooth colored fillings. You had teeth whitening, uh, porcelain veneers that came on strong. And within a short period of time, every, indent, every dentist had some part of that within their practice. Then in the 90s and the early 2000s, you had implants. And that was the next big thing in dentistry. 
Well, in the early 2000s, and even uh, 2010, 2012, getting involved in snoring and sleep apnea was what I would call the early adopters. They were jumping into that at that time. But now today, we're at a point where there's this, we're in that, you know, the, the end point of the hockey stick that's going up that exponential curve, that parabolic curve. And sleep apnea, snoring and sleep apnea treatment in a dental office, if you're not doing it in your dental office, it's like the train is about to go by. It's going mainstream now for dentists. So this is very, very exciting in my world and bringing this on to dentists and why it was so important to us. You know, if you look at some numbers, and I'm a big numbers person, I believe there's about 40 million people in the U.S. that have sleep apnea, close to 100 million people that snore. And this number is growing rapidly because of the obesity rate and all of us baby boomers getting older. So when you look at that and you understand that less than 10% of the people with sleep apnea are being treated. So you have about 4 million people being treated. Of that 4 million, 90% are with a CPAP machine that has an 80% non-compliance rate. So I only have, if you're lucky, about a million people being treated with mouthpieces from a dentist, which has a very high compliance rate. I believe that within the next two to five years, we will have 10 to 25 a 10 to 25 million people of the 40 being treated. So we're talking about 25 to 50 percent being treated. Right now, there are not enough dentists in the country trained to properly treat sleep. And so there's been a lot of issues thus far with people, dentists uh, getting trained, being able to successfully build. There's a lot of issues with some of the side effects of sleep. And that was our goal. You know, what Zipa did, and you talked about the Zipa site when they go to zipa.com. If any of your listeners listen to Sirius Radio, they probably hate me because they've heard the Jimmy commercials. You know, Jimmy's this kind of goomba, the gangster from New York, New Jersey. We are now the number one most well uh, branded advertiser on Sirius Radio. We spent a few million dollars last year. This year, we'll probably spend somewhere between 15 to 30 million dollars trying to, not trying, but actually doing an excellent job getting the word out that snoring is no longer acceptable. You know, when we grew up, Uncle Joe on the couch during Thanksgiving after dinner, he kind of, you know, dozed off and he'd be snoring and everybody at the Thanksgiving dinner was just kind of laughing and making fun of him you know, there he's snoring. And six months later, Uncle Joe had a heart attack and died. And nobody related it to the fact that it was snoring, which was really sleep apnea at the time. So what we're doing with z is we're making it unacceptable to snore. If you snore, you're a pariah. It's like having bad breath or going outside without body deodorant. It's disrespectful to your bed partner, to your sleeping partner, and you need to get it fixed. And so similar to, you know, Howard, you probably remember, what was the impact with dentists when Crest came out with their white strips uh, through Procter & Gamble? How did dentists feel? They hated them, didn't they? Yeah, they, they felt they, 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 they were felt totally betrayed. dissed. Yeah, they felt betrayed. They said Procter & Gamble, through Crest white strips, are going after our bleaching patients. And what I said to my colleagues at the time, I said, you guys are nuts. I said, you should be thanking Crest and Procter and Gamble because they're spending fifty million dollars a year telling people they need white teeth. And what are they going to do? All those people now that didn't think people needed white teeth, they're now coming to your office because they now want instant bleaching and they want veneers and they want whiter crowns. So in it it helped to spur that entire cosmetic dentistry revolution because people now felt they had to get white teeth. And we're doing the same thing. So I've had dentists come and say, well, you know, you sell a mouthpiece for $99 online. Isn't that competing with me selling, you know, them a custom mouthpiece for $3,000? And here's the reality, Howard, and these numbers are pretty staggering. We get every single week more than 45,000 unique visitors to our website. 
If you do some math times 52 weeks, you're over 2 million people a week, coming, uh, 2 million people a year coming to our site, and that number is growing significantly. More than 50% of those people don't buy our mouthpiece because they need to see a dentist. So what we're doing is cre we've created ZFOS Sleep Certified, the professional division, so that we can refer these patients to the dental office. Out of that 2 million, if we only refer 10% to our member dentists, that's going to be over 200,000 patients. Okay? The average dentist, the average diplomat in the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine sees five patients a month or 60 patients a year. If we're referring even 100,000 patients, that's a massive amount of dentists. But we have to get them trained first. And so that's what we're doing. Now, the fun part, you've got a townie meeting coming up in April, right? Right. April 19th to the 21st at Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. That's it. And the black and white party, we are doing, as you know, we are going to be doing a worldwide launch of the Zipa Sleep Certified Professional Division at your party in Vegas at the black and white party in C you know, at Caesars there. Nice. So we're really Thank excited. you for doing that. Thank you for choosing a townie meeting as your venue to do that. Hey, Howard, I have loved what you've done for dentistry over the years. You know, you made it so all of us solo dentists were never practicing alone. That form was phenomenal. And so what we did, as you know, I've been around sleep for a while now. I've done sit one day courses, weekend courses, week long courses. We did a 12 month, we did 12 month programs. And none of those programs really were successful to the level that I wanted to, and to be able to allow that everyday dentist to be able to be successful in sleep and bring it into their office. I mean, you know, what you have to do is take, close your office, go travel someplace, then bring it home and try and tell your staff and get your staff going with what you've done. So what we did with Zipa Sleep Certified is we created a whole library of online educational courses. So not only can you do it, but your staff can do it as often as you want. They go through the exams. They learn it. We have live webinars. Uh, we have e-letters. But the key part is forums. So we have a specific dental sleep forum where any dentist who's a member can go online 24-7 and get answers from experts. They can, they've got a patient in the chair. They can find out what's going on. So they're not practicing alone. So this is, is that, are those forums on zipa.com or snoreexperts.com? Oh, everything is on zipa.com. It'll be through the Zipa Sleep Certified website. And when somebody becomes a member, okay, they will have access to all of that. And that's all going to be through the zipa.com website. So, it, yeah, absolutely. And that forum is going to be key, and it will always be manned by sleep experts, people doing, tw dentists doing 20 or more patients every single month. So these are going to be the top leaders in the country that are going to be on the forum helping other dentists. Now, here's one of the other big issues I had, Howard, and you can relate to this. A lot of people with programs out there charge a lot of money for these programs. They're expensive, and dentists go, you know, for sleep, how do I spend all this money? What we're doing is, and we're going to have promo codes out for dental town members that want to join. It's only going to be $300 a month. That's it. And for $300 a month, they're going to be able to get every single benefit. We have one of the sections on the um, website are, are downloadable forms that we use in our practice. And so those forms include informed consents, what we do for our patients, testimonial forms, insurance billing forms, uh, marketing forms, you name it. There's over 100 forms that will be able to be downloaded for free. All of that is there, you know, and I've had people say, you know, what if somebody comes on because you have no contracts? What if somebody says, you know, I'm going to come on for the first month. I want to join and I'll spend three hundred dollars and I'm going to just every day I'm going to be on there. I'll go through every course, download all the forms and then I'm going to quit. And so I've had, you know, consultants, and people tell me, you know, you shouldn't let people do that. And the truth is, I'm not worried about that, Howard. 
If somebody wants to do that, you know, it's like Costco has this amazing return policy. And they know some people go and they buy the product, they use it, and then they return it. That's maybe 2 to 5%, but the other 95%, they appreciate it. And you get loyal people. It's, a, it's about the service. It's about giving and not holding back. Too many people, too many lecturers in dentistry, they kind of hold that secret sauce away. They don't want to give away their secret sauce. What we want to do is we want to give away everything. We want to make the dentist successful because the more successful they are, the more successful we are. You know, we're in a very unique place. We make our revenue, the bulk of our revenue comes from our consumer side. With our advertising, both on TV, I mean, we're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars every week on advertising. We have a billboard in Times Square right now, a three-story billboard in Times Square in New York about z and getting the word out and the message out. So our goal, we need to have dentists trained all over the country that can treat these patients. And so that's what we're trying to do is bring it towards them and bring this to everybody. You know, when, when, you, when you study economics, I mean, the Industrial Revolution really started about 1880, where uh, at first it was a steam engine. It was pumping water out of flooded coal mines. And with any technology, it gets better, faster, easier, cheaper, and smaller. And when the steam engine got small enough, then it went into shipping. And then when the ships got here, it triggered canal building. And then there was a telegraph, the telephone, the internet. Um, when I got to school in the 80s, I thought it was the dental materials revolution. And that technology led was made us do the cosmetic revolution. Um, the 2000s was the technology revolution with the uh, CBCT uh, cone beam, um, which I think kicked off the implant revolution. What technology... Um, spurred you in uh, in Zipa. What what was the technological foundation that bubbled and exploded everything you're doing? That's a great question. You know, and that really was what got me to do what I'm doing. I found I kind of fell into sleep apnea, like you said. I was about 2001. I had no clue about snoring and sleep apnea. And guy came in trying to sell us a pharyngometer, and said the new hot thing is snoring and sleep apnea. And we said, snoring and sleep out, you know, what is that? How do you treat it? And he showed us this big, clunky mouthpiece. And we said, okay, that's in our world. And we bit, we bought the equipment, and we started to try and treat sleep apnea and snoring. Well, the problem was that if you, the patient had mild to moderate sleep apnea, our success rate was only about 50 to 75%. Now, in medicine, that's pretty good. But as dentists... We cringe at a 50 to 75% success rate. You know, those patients are coming very often, money out of pocket, even if insurance is paying the bulk of it, and they only have to pay five or $700. If it doesn't work, they're upset with us. And then we feel guilty like we blew it. And so, you know, 50 to 75% success rate for cancer or diabetes is fantastic, except if you're one of the people not successful. And if it was severe, it was success was less than 20%. So that's when, you know, I was fortunate. You said, uh, you know, in the, initially, my undergraduate degree was, was in biomedical engineering. You know, the Syracuse Orangeman. <laughs> that's where I came out of. And so. Does this mean you're a Buffalo Bills fan? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a New York Giants fan. But, okay. uh, but yeah, so uh, at any rate, I looked at that success rate and I said, at 50 to 75 percent, that means one out of four or two out of four people are not successful. And that's not good enough. And so we started to look at the tongue and realize the importance that the tongue played. And so I needed to, I realized we need to find an appliance that was smaller, more comfortable and more successful. And by adding the tongue component to it, our success rate went huge. In fact, what we did is uh, and one of, one of the inventions I have is I invented what we call a hybrid mouthpiece. It's the only mouthpiece out there that both brings the jaw forward and goes after the tongue. And that allows us to be successful, tremendously successful, even on severe sleep apnea patients. So we have patients that are considered extremely severe. They stop breathing 80 plus times an hour. And after we treat them with our mouthpiece, they're normal. So that's very exciting and that's kind of what drove me to going and doing this now the other issues were that i would hear lecturers tell dentists that 
TMJ problem, TMJ issues were a problem, but that's okay because you're saving somebody's life. They would say, no, fight changes. That somebody, their jaw being forward all that time, that's going to, in many cases, change their bite on a permanent basis. And, but that's okay because you're saving their lives and they're still not going to starve. And again, all these things, you know, there was a lecture out there that said, we're only as good as the science. And I would argue with them and say, no, our job as dentists, as professionals is to better the science, is to improve the science. And so that's what we did. And so the appliance that we have for uh, the dentist, which is very different, the one that we sell to consumers for 99 bucks, is a boil and bite mouth guard similar to a sports mouth guard. The one we sell for dentists. And we did a unique thing with our appliance for dentists. And it's the reason why most people have never heard of it. And that's because every other appliance on the market, if you just go ahead, take impressions, send it to a lab, they will make that a mouthpiece for you. So whether it's a tap or a herbst or a dorsal um, or a silent night, that's what they'll do with our mouthpiece. We will not allow anybody to use our mouthpiece unless they take our sleep certified course and pass the course. So they actually, like Invisalign, they have to take our course before we'll let them use it because we want to make sure that if somebody's using the mouthpiece, they're going to be successful. We don't, we'll take shorter sales and the smaller sales in the short run so that we have greater success long term. How long is that course on Zypha.com? Well, the course, when somebody signs up, it's a simple hour, it's a simple hour, hour and a half course. And so it's not a very long involved course. It's very easy to take and it's online. And how much is it? It's free. It's part of the course. It's part of the membership. So, so, if, you go, so, if, you, membership. so if you go on your iPhone to Zypha.com, where is the course on the, uh, the app? Well, tr today we're March 23rd. They will find it on the app. April 20th, when we launch it at the townie meeting. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. And, and by the way, when people are looking up your name, I always go to my contacts and I, <laughs> I always type in Jonathan Greenberg, but I always spell it B E R G, but you're B U R G. That's not very common for the name Greenberg, is it? No, it's, it's always been difficult, but that's what I had. So, you know, we actually, uh, you know, we do a lot of radio advertising for our sleep apnea treatment centers in L.A. And one of the things I would always do when I would do the ads is I'd say it's Greenberg with a U. And I would have people meet me in the streets go, oh, you're Dr. Greenberg with a U. And it would be it was a lot of fun. It was kind of, you know, one of the things you I'm sure you love is taking a lemon and turning it into lemonade. So people would go to our Google. Uh, they'd search Google for Greenberg. They'd spell it wrong. They wouldn't find us. So I said, how do we get us back to the front page? And so we said, you know, Greenberg with a U, we got back and it became this whole branding that was a lot of fun for the LA treatment center. Well, that, that's, uh, I think that's very cool. If you're, I'd rather be the only Greenberg with a U than the other 99% with an E. Um, that's why I named my book Uncomplicate Business because the, the publisher kept saying, well, uncomplicate's not a word. I said, I know. Go to Amazon.com and type in uncomplicate and only one, one book comes up because it's not a word. <laughs> Well, that's how, you know, how, that's how we came up with the name Zipa, because I started to look at names for the company and I said, you know, I don't, what's memorable? What are people going to remember? And, you know, I'm very fiercely competitive. And if I'm spending money on advertising, I don't want somebody to buy my competitor's product thinking that it's mine that they're purchasing. So I said, let's go the Google and Yahoo route. Let's come up with a name that has nothing to do with what the product actually is. But then I started to think of backwards and stuff. And I said, what can everybody relate to? And everybody can relate to happy Z's. That's what they want. Happy sleep. And said, okay. What's that backwards? And so we created the name. So, uh, obviously, you know, better to be lucky than smart, which is how we did that. And we got all the URLs, the trademark, and it's really taken off like, you know, just viral, which has been fantastic. You know, it, it's, it's my job to, to, uh, really ask questions on behalf of my listeners. And they, uh, um, they email me Howard at dentaltown.com all the time. Bottom line is people that do podcasting are more likely to be younger than our age, our age. We read textbooks and go to conventions. These people 
or on online, uh, all that stuff. But anyway, I know what they're driving in the car saying right now. They're saying, okay, Jonathan, you don't get it. I just graduated from dental school and we didn't have one class on sleep apnea. Um, I, how, what would you tell her? She's driving to work right now and she says, I, I just graduated. I, I don't know anything about this. How should she start her journey? How should she learn more? If she said, I really want to get good at this, what what journey, what path would you put her on? I mean, basically, it's that's what we created the Sleep Certified uh, Program for. It's so everybody, if you're just starting out, if you've never treated sleep before, or if you're an expert treating 50 patients a month, this site has everything on it for you. The Library of Educational Courses is probably the largest library of sleep courses, sleep-related courses anywhere. And for less than two patients, what you get two patients or referrals from us, it covers an entire $300 per month fee. And it's unlimited. So that person in the car listening to this now has unlimited not only the coursework, but question and answer live with experts through the forum. So everything we designed to be for that person, that young person, because them, you know, one of the most exciting things for me, Howard, having been practicing for 36 years and, you know, the first 25 was cosmetic dentistry, full mouth reconstruction. I thought, I appreciate, you know, we had a dentist during one of our trainings out of Philadelphia, uh, Dr. Slobodinsky, and he was out to my practice and he saw it in the morning alone. He said, you know, in fact, I had him on a webinar and he said, you know, Jonathan, in my entire career, practicing 30 years, I maybe can count on one hand the number of times a patient told me what I did for them was life changing. What I did for them impacted my life, their life so much, and they appreciated like nothing else. He said, in your office this morning alone, I had five patients tell me that the treatment with you changed their lives. They're back in bed with a spouse after 20 years. They no longer have headaches. They're not falling asleep during the daytime. Their performance, their professional athlete, and their performance is now better than it was in the past five years. So sleep, from a dentist standpoint, to me is the most rewarding. You know, my day is so spectacular when I'm in the centers because all I get to do is have fun with patients. My staff, you know, the treatment itself is easy. You know, it's putting in adjust, putting in appliances, adjusting the appliances. Uh, my assistants do most of that. I get to schmooze with my patients. I get to find out about them. And we help them in a manner that's so significant. Now, here for your younger people listening, they want to grow their practice, don't they? Well, you treat somebody for sleep apnea and you get them back in bed with their spouse. They're in love with you. Guess who they're going to see for their dental work? They're coming to you. What I call double dipping. So every sleep patient that you get becomes a dental patient and they're a raving fan of yours because you just did the most significant thing for them in their lives. What you did was life changing, you know, getting them out of pain with a root canal or even a nice filling or a crown or veneers is nice. But when you change their sleep for the better and they don't have headaches in the morning, they feel fantastic. You know, they're losing weight. They've tried to lose weight. They've been on 20 diets. The problem with sleep apnea, you cured their sleep apnea, and now they've just lost 50, 60 pounds and they're keeping it off? I mean, you're making life changes. We're being the doctor that we are. We're not just doing mechanical things. We are now saving and impacting people's lives. And that's what drives me. You know, it's, this is what, what makes it so exciting. Okay, I got to ask you another question because I, I know what they're thinking. I watch them talk on Dental Down. <clears throat> they're thinking this. Well, I see these sleep apnea courses, but I can't tell if they're trying to sell me a machine or teach me sleep apnea. I got $350,000 of student loans. Um, do I need to buy these $5,000 take home sleep study? You know, what, what type of in technology are they going to have to buy? How much money is this going to cost? What do they need to buy to do this? Howard, I love that you're asking this question. They don't need to buy a single piece of equipment. They don't need to spend any money. The pharyngometer, it's a waste. 
It doesn't have any scientific evidence that it has any value for sleep medicine. They don't need, if they want to get a cone bean, that's fantastic for their dental practice. It can be used here, but they don't need that. What they need is to do, educate themselves. They need to get onto the forum. They need to take the courses, get onto our forum, and learn about sleep, and start treating the patients in their practice. Don't be looking outside of their practice. A third of their existing practice has snoring and a sleep apnea problem. You know, I have dentists that tell me, you know, th th they don't have sleep apnea. What do I do with them? And I go, well, do you treat somebody who doesn't have decay with veneers? Do you whiten their teeth? Do you do cleanings if their teeth are healthy? Of course you do. Do you do ortho on teeth that don't have, that aren't diseased? Of course you do. If somebody's got a snoring problem, there's no reason not to treat them. Of course you should treat them. And yes, they have to pay cash out of pocket, but they do that for implants and ortho anyway. So we have to get things around our head that, yes, our practice, they're there. So for that person who's listening to the car and saying, I've got a lot of loan, I've got a lot of debt, no, you don't have to spend a dime. There's one item that has to happen when you treat a patient for sleep apnea, and I'm really firm on this, and that is that patient, you should not be treating that patient unless they have a sleep study. And it should be a home sleep study. They don't need to send them to a center. You probably won't get the patient back, but the home sleep studies are very effective. Uh, I, in some ways, I believe that they're actually more accurate than the ones at a center where you can get false positives. But they do need a sleep study. Now, there are numerous ways to get sleep study. And in about by June, we will have a program where a dentist can uh, actually just send them through us. They don't even have to have units. But it's very simple. If a dentist really wants to get involved in sleep, they can lease a unit, one of the best home sleep testing units on the market, uh, which I believe is the Watermark Aries unit. What I like is it's cordless, it goes around the head, it's the easiest for patients to use, and you can do a three-night study. We do a three-night study on everybody because it gives you the most data and information. Well, you can lease one of these units through z it's right about $300. And at $300 a month, if you treat one patient with that sleep study, it's covered your investment. So, and you, you're just leasing it. So one, one time a month, if you use that sleep testing equipment, you've covered it. You should be using it three or four times a month. So now it's a moneymaker for you. It's not a big investment, $300, pretty reasonable, but that's all they have to spend. So you like the watermark made by medgadget.com? Uh, watermark's made by Sleep Med. It's, a, it's the watermark Ares watermark. unit, A-R-E-S. Okay, there it is, okay, at home, yeah. Sleep Med. Okay, sleep so med, sleepmedinc.com? Sleepmedinc.com. And through, through, um, through uh, ZPOS Sleep Certified, we have a special deal. So it's cheaper through us than if you go through them directly. Okay, so but that's the, uh, so you're going to do a deal with sleepmedinc.com, and you're going to get them a, a volume discount if they go through you for that? Well, yeah, because we have so many members uh, through them that watermark, the watermark unit, the watermark Aries unit through us, uh, you get a better deal than you would get going directly just as a one person. Okay. So, so what's the compliance rate of CPAP and what's the um, compliance rate of an oral appliance? Depends who you speak to. What we find personally is the C CPAP compliance rate is about 20% which means most everybody, if they had a choice between an oral appliance or a CPAP, they choose the oral appliance. So now you'll find patients that are on a CPAP, they love it, it's life changing, it's game changing, and that's fantastic. You don't wanna mess with them. If they're happy, that's great. You go after that 80% that is not happy or not wearing them, or the 80% on top of that, that's not even diagnosed. And those are the people. Now, for an oral appliance, the compliance rate is over 80%. So it's only a 20% non-compliance so the, 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 the question is, would just would Supreme Court Justice Scalia have a 60% greater chance of being alive today if he'd have been on an oral appliance instead of having a CPAP machine by his bed in the hotel? Can't believe you asked that. Supreme Court Justice Scalia would be alive today if he wore my appliance. So, I mean, there, there's a case. So you believe he died of sleep apnea? 
Well, there's no question he died of sleep apnea. In fact, he brought his CPAP unit with him to Texas, set it up on the night table stand, did not plug it in because he didn't want to wear it that night. And he died of severe sleep apnea. You know, that's, and what, what concerns me, what gets me so upset is the medical community does not offer or is even aware in most cases that all appliances work so well, they can be used for people with severe sleep apnea. We treat them every day. And, you know, I'm not going to get into it. I've got, you know, there's observed neglect uh, that I think the medical community is doing with their patients when a cardiologist practice has 50 to 70 percent of their patients of sleep apnea and they don't send any for a sleep study. An internist has 30 percent of their patients of sleep apnea and none of those are sent for a sleep study. So I think there's a real problem and that's going to change. You see what Zipod's doing direct to consumer is we're causing this massive awareness which is going, which is going to cause this massive change in the U.S. with the treatment of both snoring and sleep apnea, which is why if you're a dentist, you know, Howard, one of the things that I look at, and I'm sure you've heard this story many times, is how do you catch an elephant? Okay, this wave going from 4 million people to 40 million people or 20 million, uh, which is only 50 percent of the snorers and sleep apnea people being treated. How, how do you go and get that piece, that piece for your practice, which is going to be worth millions of dollars? And what you do, if you're going to catch an elephant, you know, I always have the visual of a bunch of people running around trying to grab onto the elephant, catch him by the tail, the legs, and being dragged. No. The way you catch an elephant, the tsunami, is you figure out what direction it's going, build a big hole right in front of it, and let it walk right into it. So get the training now. To all these people listening on the podcast in their cars, get trained now. Start with some of the patients in your own practice. And you're going to find in the next two to five years, sleep will be one of the most, if not the most profitable part of your practice. In fact, if you don't do sleep, your patients will be walking out the door to the dentist next door that is treating sleep for them. So that's exciting. So, you know, the um, when I got out of school in 87, the biggest brands in dentistry were already made. Crass, Colgate, Listerine. The only big brands I've seen made since was the uh, same strategy you're doing. Invisalign, they said, we're just going to go straight to the people. Um, the, the, the orthodontist has been doing brackets and wires their whole life, and we're going we're gonna to go after the people to go in and tell the orthodontist, hey, do Invisalign. And they're getting about 20% of the market, and that's what you're doing. You're building a B2C brand, so they come knock on the B2B dentist door and say, I want this. That is exactly correct, Howard. You know, there's a great book. I suspect you've probably read it called Blue Ocean Strategy. Mm-hmm. My Love favorite that book. Yep. And it makes, what it says is you should not be in the bloody red waters that everybody's fighting about. Go where your competition is irrelevant. And in sleep, you hear everybody complaining because everybody's fighting over those 10% that are diagnosed and treated. All the sleep physicians, all the dentists, all the sleep labs are fighting over that 10%. And we said, that's just nuts. That's just a bloody place that nobody wins. Let's go to the 90% that are undiagnosed, untreated, and our competition becomes irrelevant. So yes, we look at ourselves as on that same path as Invisalign. And that's the trajectory we're at at the moment. So yeah, we when we look at, you know, we expect we will have uh, within the year, 10,000 members uh, that are all z Sleep certified. You know, another, and, another mentor, idol dentist, who reminds me uh, so much of you, was uh, uh, the late Bob Houston, who passed away last year, where everybody sold toothpaste for the same price. Crass Colgate, it was all four bucks a tube. And this guy said, I'm going to um, um, have a premium toothpaste. And he went right to the consumer. He did something. Everybody thought he was crazy. He did a big i think it was a million dollar commercial during miss universe or he sponsored the the miss universe deal and it was it was a uh, uh, rembrandt toothpaste and yep. uh, he 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 single-handedly created the, that entire genre that entire space 
of a premium toothpaste. So I'm uh, that is amazing uh, what you're doing. Um, I I want I want to throw another question at you that the young kids have. Okay, they say yeah. um, I'll just be straight up with you, John. This is what they're thinking. They're saying, "Look, I just came out of school. We didn't place one implant. We didn't place do one Invisalign. We didn't do one sleep apnea, and I'm overwhelmed." So you're um, competing. You're you're trying to get this. 25 year old lady to learn sleep apnea and she's been being bombarded to learn implants invisalign you know the list goes on and on why should she learn sleep and not surgically placing implants again all your i love your questions because they're right to the point let's look at business and some of the best business consultants for dentistry will tell you what do you make on a per hour basis per procedure and if you're young and you've got to practice, you've got to learn these numbers. What's your per hour basis when you do a filling? How much you make per hour when you do a crown? How much you make per hour when you do an implant? The highest hourly rate you get is treating a sleep apnea patient. So the average case is $3,000. Our average, we get more than that, but the average patient in sleep is worth $3,000 and the dentist time is about an hour. So do you want to be making $3,000 an hour or $250 an hour? Plus, so that's, pl plus the bloody barbarian stuff of pulling wisdom teeth, sinus lifts, bone grafting, all that. That's a much longer learning curve. And you got to have a, might have to get a $100,000 CBCT. You might have got to go to Dominican Republic with a rune garg. I mean, that, that they, you, you can dig yourself $200,000 into more debt before you place an implant. And the non-bloody stuff, sleep, Invisalign, bonding, bleaching, veneers, shorter learning curve. Would you agree or disagree? Oh, absolutely. In fact, sleep treatment is one of the easiest treatments that you'll ever see. Some of the processes are more challenging, which is what we're doing with, uh, with the help and what we do through our sleep certified model. But the treatment itself is very easy. Also, the risk. You know, you talk about sinus lift or perforation of a nerve or such. Uh, when you do an implant with sleep, there's almost no risk of malpractice. So uh, you're not doing anything that's going to harm in that way. Uh, it's very open in that manner, which is wonderful. You also with sleep, as I said before, with our appliance, we've made it so there's no TMJ issues. So we've eliminated with our appliance the TMJ issues as well as any change in the bike. So we pretty much, through our educational courses and the programs, those are now no longer problems either. So, yeah, I mean, sleep, one of the most profitable areas, one of the easiest areas to treat, one of the fastest learning curves, and one of the most rewarding from feedback from patients and loyalty than any area in dentistry. So, uh, and here's one other thing, Howard. I know a lot of the people on the podcast are the younger ones, but I know a lot of people are going to read the magazine that are older like you and me. When you start hitting 50, you're tired. You know, your back is starting to get sore. Your eyes aren't what they used to be. Uh, you know, you do a full day of seeing, you know, a lot of patients and a lot of crown and bridge and work that, you know, is making you money, but you're beat up at the end of the day. What I've seen so many people and what we recommend to dentists is you grow that sleep practice and what happens is that sleep practice starts to become so successful that you bring on an associate who becomes a partner and then that associate becomes a partner you end up doing more and more sleep they do more and more dental and then you decide okay i'm ready to pull the trigger you sell them your dental practice but you refer them your sleep patients, after you treat them for sleep, they want your dentist. So because of that loyalty, you now have increased the value of your practice substantially instead of your practice declining. Your practice grows because you're now getting 10, 20, 30 sleep patients a month that are coming to you, loving you, and then you refer them to what was your dental practice. The person buying your dental practice is getting an influx of 10 to 30 new patients a month that all typically need work because they're 45 to 70 years old, which means, guess what? They've got old dental work that needs to be replaced, and they've got disposable income because their kids have gone and finished college. 
that's the ideal dental patient that you want to get and you're referring them to your existing practice. So as a transition, it's incredible. You could have almost no overhead. In fact, if you want to stop doing dentistry tomorrow and you knew sleep well, you could go to five dental practices if you wanted to work at each dental practice one day a week, one day a month and do fantastic with no overhead. Okay, so, I, 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 I want to ask you a very controversial question and um, we get this a lot on a dental town. I get this a lot to email me. Um, a lot of the younger kids walk out of school and one of their biggest complaints against guys our age is they say, look, you get 100 endodontists in a room, they don't really have any controversies, debates. 100 pediatric dentists, no controversies, debates. When it comes to TMJ, TMD, you guys can't, our generation can't get their shit together. They, you know, there's neuromuscular, there's this, there's that. And they say to me, why is TMJ so controversial? They almost see it as like world religions. I mean, there's Buddhism, Hindus, Muslims, Catholics, Lutherans. Uh, and, and one of the four, first forks in the road they come to is there's like neuromuscular camps or CR camps. Um, a lot of them can't even ask the basic question, is TMJ related to uh, sleep apnea? Is bruxism TMJ? So just, I want to hear your rants about TMJ. And by the way, yeah. some people email me and say, Howard, why do you call it TMJ? TMJ is a joint, it's temporomandibular disorders. Well, my response to that is my patients don't ever come in and say TMD. If your patients call it TMJ, it's TMJ. Same thing with the endodontist. They voted on a deal to stop saying root canals and call it endodontic therapy. Well, it's too late. There's 324 million Americans, and do they call it root canals or endodontic therapy? So uh, if, okay. your, if your customer comes in and wants to talk about a root canal, you don't start talking about endodontic therapy. So I want to hear your rants on TMJ. Um, should she learn neuromuscular, CR, is it related to sleep? Some say it is, some say it not. What, what, are, you, what are your thoughts on that whole subject? I, you know, you open up a whole wonderful big area. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I believe in the KISS principle, okay? And let's call it TMJ. I'm 100% with you on relating to the patient. I don't need to relate to my colleagues the way I need to relate to my patients. And I believe it's simple. I don't treat TMJ. Okay, when I have a patient come in and they tell me my jaw is sore, I can't open it, I'm having these difficulties, uh, and they're a sleep patient. So if they're not a sleep patient, really all I do is make them an NTI and I haven't had a single patient in my 36 years of practice that if I make them an NTI, they haven't gotten better enough to where I don't need to do full mouth reconstruction or anything else. Now, but I'll that's, that, that's Jim Boyd, right? That's Jim Boyd. And, and he, he practices around you. Isn't he in Southern Cal too? San Diego, I think. So are, you still, are you still friends with him? Do you talk to him much? Or I don't know Jim, Jim Boyd personally, yeah. but I can tell you, you know, discluding basically TMJ in my mind. It's just my, this is my opinion. It's all about the muscles. If you free up the muscles, then everything gets better. And that's what I did with my appliance. So I don't think you've seen my mouthpiece, but you know how all the appliances that you see for sleep apnea and snoring bring the jaw forward and they kind of lock it in a forward position. My appliance, we use elastics. We use orthodontic elastics to, el to bring the jaw forward. And we change to a higher, we go from six ounce to eight ounce to 12 ounce to advance the jaw. But what we accomplish by that is that we don't get um, we're not the jaw. We can provide freedom for the jaw in all three planes. So it can go left, right, forward, back, up and down. That allows the muscles to be completely free without any interferences. In fact, we don't take a bite registration with our mouthpiece. So our mouthpiece is easier to take impressions for because you don't do a bite registration or things called the George gauge or estimate how far you want to advance them. We advance them based on what the musculature can allow. And when we do that, we find that we don't have any TMJ issues. I've treated thousands of patients, Howard. Okay. Thousands of patients. I've never had a single patient that had TMJ issues that didn't get better with a combination of the appliance and kind of like an NTI combination within that. 
Do you so, agree or disagree that um, for the young, the 25 year olds looking at the older dentists, do you believe there's more controversy with TMJ than there is with say endodontics or pediatric dentistry? Absolutely. And I think that it's a controversy though, if I'm a younger dentist, ignore, don't, don't lose sleep over it because they're both right. They're both right. They're both wrong. Keep it simple. What works for your patient? And what works for your patient keeps your patient happy. And that I think that's where a young dentist should really focus on, not get caught up in controversy because everybody makes good arguments and everybody, as I said, they're both right and wrong. Well, the but reason, what is, the what's reason right I keep asking is because, you know, money is the answer. What's the question? A lot of them really want to know what you think because some types of TMJ you learn, you got to buy ten, fifteen thousand $15,000 worth of equipment. Uh, you know, myotronics, bite registration, things like that. Do you think she needs to go out and buy uh, some expensive equipment to understand TMD or TMJ better? I never have. I've had, I've been very successful and I've got one of the largest sleep practices in the country and I don't have any of that equipment and I keep it really simple and I leave it all about getting the muscles relaxed and comfortable and basically get rid of your interferences. So if you don't have the interferences, uh, lateral interferences, anterior interferences, you get to use a bite disclosure like um, the NTI appliance. I've never had a problem and needed, never needed expensive equipment. So, you know, for me, that's what's worked. You as a dentist, as you know, Howard, you have to find out what's comfortable in your wheelhouse, what works for you. Uh, you know, there are some dentists that go, I've got to buy every piece of equipment and then they leave 90% of it sitting in the closet. And then you have other dentists that really look at what they actually need, what works, and go slowly at it to see what feels comfortable in their hands and works for their patients. And then the other thing that you did so well, they should go onto the Dental Town Forum. They have a problem with a TMJ patient, go onto the sites and ask questions that they're having with patients. Learn from people who have been down the road and learn from dentists that they now can call mentors that will help them and find that path. Everybody's got a different mentor that works for them. I think that's one of the beauties of Dental Town and the Dental Town Forum. You know, I, I think a lot of people misunderstand my views on a lot of uh, CAD CAM, lasers, all that. Some people say, why are you against it or why are you for it? The bottom line is this. I can take an impression with Emperor gum for 18 bucks, send it to my lab man, and he can mill me out a zirconium crown for $99. That is keeping it simple and very high profitable. I also own a CAD cam and can scan it, mill it out, make it the whole nine yards. But I always saw that stuff as boys and their toys. Like dentistry is a burnout job. I mean, you're doing the same thing decade after decade after decade and, and they can burn out. So if buying a laser makes you run 20 red lights on the way to work, Gosh darn, you can't afford not to have a laser. If getting myotronics and doing all this, you know, you, you know, it's, it's like I tell them when I put my four boys in the bathtub, if I put them in there with just a bar of soap, they'd all jump out. But if I threw in boats and trucks and all this stuff on the sandbox and the beach, you know, buy anything that makes your mental health motivated and happy so you want to go to work and play. But if you're saying to me, Howard, you have an MBA from ASU. Do I need these things? You're saying no. I'm saying I agree with you 100%. If you want the toys, great. There are, there are things, there's information that those toys will tell you that is good. You have to find your own comfort level. As a new dentist, you have to find what works for you. And you've got dentists that keep it real simple. Don't buy the stuff. Dentists that buy all the stuff. And then most of us are somewhere in the middle based on what we're doing and, and, and i also i also like the uh the thing that you allude to you know i divide dentistry into bloody barbarian stuff and soft and pretty stuff and some people they come out of dental school and they say to me they say i i, I don't like blood and gut stuff and i always think to myself well why the hell didn't you become an engineer i mean why did you not know going in to become a doctor that the insides were filled with blood but some people just like soft and pretty stuff and i'm telling you when you start getting 50 55, 60, 65, and some of your eye hand coordination is going, your lower back's going. It's really easy to do hygiene checks, sleep apnea checks, appliance therapy checks, Invisalign checks. 
And a lot of dentists um, should diversify out of the stuff where, um, you know, I, I mean, I always thought to myself that if I needed to have like a, a, a brain tumor removed and I need like the ultimate doctor, you'd want the, the, the average between the most experienced and the most youthful body to do this. And I was thinking the sweet spot is probably like 45, maybe 45 to 50 max. But you wouldn't want a 75-year-old neurosurgeon removing a tumor off your spine. Um, so um, I do think uh, the soft and pretty stuff, um, like say you get to spend most of your time smoothing. By the way, you never told me you 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 went to New York and all that. Were you born in um, New York and then went and moved out to Southern Cal? How did that happen? Yeah, I grew up in Long Island. So um, grew up there, went to Syracuse undergrad with the snow and then NYU. And, you know, when I graduated, you know, as you know, you're not, once you set up a practice, you're not going to move once you set up a practice. And growing up when we did, you know, in the seventies and uh, such in the sixties, listen to Be the Beach Boys, Jan and Dean, uh, you know, you hear about Southern California. I always loved snow skiing and the idea that I could go snow skiing in the morning and windsurfing in the afternoon. I said, you know, this is the time to get out to Southern California. And I took my wife and both our parents hated it. And the first day I went snow skiing in the morning and windsurfing in the afternoon. It was kind of a sealed deal. And we've been out here ever since. So where, so, did, you go, where did you go skiing at? Is that uh, Big Bear? No. Nah, well, yeah, that day it was Big Bear. But Big normally Bear. we'll go to the Rockies. The Ro Yeah, Big Bear. Um, yeah, that, that is amazing. So you know, that, that, Howard, yeah. so what I was going to say. What's that? What I was going to say is I think it's real important for the listeners to understand is sleep is not something that's age dependent as a dentist. I have two partners and one of my partners, Dr. Jay Crisandi is in his forties. Our other partner, uh, Dr. Stephanie Coletta, she's in her twenties and they're young and you know, not old and they love it. You know, what you want to do in dentistry is you want to do things that you're passionate about. You don't need to specialize. And it's not age related. Sleep has wonderful stuff if you're right out of dental school or you've been practicing for 30 years or more. So it's got all that. One of the keys that I would recommend to the people listening here, you know, there was a quote by Bobby Knight that I loved. And, you know, Bobby Knight talked about, he said, when it comes to winning, everybody has the will to win. Everybody wants to win just as much. He goes, the difference who wins and who doesn't win are the people that are willing to put in the work before game time. The people that are willing to put in that work, to learn, to study, to when they get beat up, they go, okay, I'm going to find a way. I'm going to turn that lemon into lemonade. And they're not going to give up. You know, I just heard somebody relate a story to me that I thought was fantastic. And it was about success. And... Uh, I think this guy's name was Eric Thomas. And what he did is he talked about success. And uh, the story goes that uh, the guru said to this person, uh, meet me at the beach tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. or so uh, in a black and white tuxedo. And the guy says, you're kidding. I want to learn about success, not go to the beach. And he goes, just meet me there. Meets in there. And he goes, has him walk in the water. And he goes, are you kidding me? I'm in this tuxedo. And he goes, do you want to be successful? Brings him out into the water, brings him further, and the guy's just looking like he's out of his mind. He gets in the water up to his neck, and then he has him go further. And then when he's, like, up to the top of his head, he pushes him and holds him underwater. And the guy is just, you know, struggling, trying to get up, and he finally lets him up. And the guy goes, what's that all about? You know, I'm trying to learn how to be successful. And he goes, how hard, how much did you fight? to get that air, to get that breath. And he goes, what do you think? Of course I did. He goes, that's right. He goes, if you want to be successful, you remember how, how hard you fought to get that breath because that's what it takes to be successful today. You have to have the fight and the desire to not say when you come home from work, oh, I'm going to go read that. I'm going to go watch TV. And get some food and watch, you know, that reality TV show. Instead, it's the people that like you have that go, you know what? I'm not listening to junk radio. I'm listening to Howard's podcast because I want to be successful. I want to learn that. 
they take their free time and instead of watching TV, they're on the Dental Town forums, learning what they need to for dentistry to be successful in their practice. You know, these young people going on, they look at us older guys and they see the ones that are successful and the ones that not are successful. And it's really clear who is and who isn't. And they should mentor those that are successful and they'll see those people have the drive. They did what others, they, when others were playing, they were working, they were practicing and training. So when it came to games, they could win. You know, I, they always say you're a summation of your five people you spend the most time with. And my gosh, that was the greatest thing about joining the uh, AGD and getting my fellowship, my mastership, because, you know, there's a thousand dentists in town, but it was always the same hundred guys at all those meetings. And when you start hanging around with people like that are always going for it, it just made you a better person. Same thing with Dental Town. After work, 80% of dentists want to get a beer and watch ESPN and check out who are these people who want to get on to Dental Town and talk about this stuff and share cases till three o'clock in the morning. I just this happened, Brady Cat. I want I want to get your opinion. I want to um, say two things. You you mentioned Bobby Knight, and that answers a lot of questions because a lot of um, a lot of emails come in. They say you know. I'm, uh, I graduated three years ago. She's 27. She looks like she's not old enough to serve alcohol. She just bought a practice, and she wants to learn about leadership. What leadership book should she read? And I always turn that around and say, you know, go back to your childhood. What leadership style worked with you? You, you need to go back. Who, who, I mean, you're a dentist. Somebody, you had some role models in your deal, and that role model that worked on you, that probably answers your type of leadership because like Bobby Knight. He got fired for his type of leadership. And I'm telling you, being a man for 54 years and raising four boys, some sometimes a leadership style that works real well with boys is throwing chairs out in the middle of the floor. Now, you know, it might not be the way you run the Girl Scouts, and it might not be the way you run some types of boys, but did you have a problem with Bobby Knight's leadership style with those boys? No, I agree with you. I think everybody's got different leadership styles. I have a gymnastic trainer that's just the opposite, uh, but I personally respond to both. And I think certain people, and I've seen, I've got a son and a daughter, and my daughter, piece of cake, she can have a very easy leadership style from me. My son, he's just, I gotta, you know, he wants, just drives me nuts. He needs a forceful, very strict, tight, tight uh, box leadership style. And, and, and you can't have one leadership style for every company and every institution and every vertical. I mean, there's a wide variety. And I'll give you another example that kind of brings home. It's like, like I want to be a good grandpa. I got two grandchildren. So I'm not going to go buy a book on how to be a good grandpa. I just thought, spent a lot of time thinking, well, what really, what was really cool about my grandparents? And one of the things that I used to love when we went to grandma's house with, uh, with my five sisters is uh, they had all these family pictures on the wall and it kind of meant a lot to us. I mean, you'd stand there and it was really interesting as a kid to see your roots and your heritage and the houses and all that. So I got a, um, a TV and I, uh, I digitized every picture I had so that when my granddaughter comes over, you know, every minute there's a different picture. And so I'm, I'm trying to be a good grandpa based on what worked best on me. And you should become a great leader on what leadership style worked on you because that probably has to do with your chemistry. Um, we went over and um, our time, we were only supposed to do an hour. We did hour three, and they only got an hour commute to work. So I'm going to leave you for a close. And the close is um, last but not least, um, what's the learning curve on this? How doable is this? She's thinking, I'm 25. Um, how, how, doable is it for me to learn all this? Because it seems a little overwhelming. I got a lot on my plate. How doable is this to do? In general, sleep has the shortest learning curve of any area in dentistry. And what we've done with Sleep Certified is make it even easier and put it all in front of you at your plate where you can learn it from home. Your staff can learn it from the office or from home. Uh, very reasonably inexpensive, and the referrals, the referrals that you're going to get from this, more than justify, I mean, we are, we're looking for dentists all over the country because we have these patients we need to refer to it. We're talking about the townie meeting, April 19th to the 21st, Caesars, Las Vegas. Um, I think you should go to the townie meeting in Las Vegas and meet the man himself. 
Uh, Jonathan's going to be there. Jonathan, thank you so much for sponsoring our black black and white event. And it's going to be a party that everyone will remember. And, uh, and again, thanks for being one of my role models and idols in my dental career. I think what you're doing is just beyond amazing. And uh, thank you so much for coming on my show. Thank you, Howard. It's been great.